A coordinate system represents a point in the plane by an ordered pair of numbers called coordinates. Usually, we use Cartesian coordinates, so which are the directed distance from two perpendicular axes, right? So let's say uh, I ask you to graph y equals to x squared, that is a parabola, what do you do? So first, you draw an x-axis on your paper, and then a y-axis on your paper, and then you sketch your parabola, right? So if you look for graphing paper online, what, what do you see? So Google look look it up graphing paper online so what do you see you see good paper right and x-axis y-axis right so that is what you see so the graphing paper that we use the one has an x and y axis that is called rectangular coordinate system all right rectangular coordinate system that has another name we call that xy plane a cartesian plane all right so in this section we are going to discuss polar coordinate system this polar coordinate system is invented by an English mathematician, Isaac Newton. The name sounds very familiar to you, right? Still heard that story before. Apple fall from a tree. He was wondering how come the apple is falling down, not going up. And then later on, he invented gravity. So I am not a physicist. I'm not going to talk too much about gravity. So let's focus back to the polar coordinate system. So do you see the first picture? I have O, X, and then P, right? So let's explain each of this. So first of all, what is O? So the O is called the origin. Or you can call it a pole. The pole or origin. And then uh, we have a we have uh, an angle, so this is theta, is an angle. And then, do you see that there is a r? So what is r represent? r represent a directed distance from point O to point P. Directed distance of the uh, segment of OP. And then angle is the directed angle. So this one, other than theta, we call this a directed angle. So directed angle. And then it rotates counterclockwise from polar axis to OP. So rotate counterclockwise from the polar axis to segment OP. All right, so we have defined the R, we define the theta, we define the O, and then we have a polar axis. So for the point on the polar coordinate system, we have a P, and then instead of X comma Y, we have R comma theta. So R is the directed uh, distance, and then theta is the directed angle. And then what is a polar, uh, what is a polar co coordinate system? Polar coordinate system looks like. So I drew one for you. Look at the yellow picture. So in this yellow picture, we are no longer using x and y. So every time we use polar, we use r, and then we use theta, directed distance, and directed angle. So r. So we are not using x and y. Do you see there are four arrow x zero zero. 90, 180 degree, 270 degree. So from 270 degree to zero, we have a 360 degree. So that means one full circle. No more x, no more y. So what about those circle? So the horizontal, the horizontal axis. So this one horizontal axis. So the r is horizontal axis. And then this circle, we call that a concentric circles. And then the theta, we can have the theta in either in degree or radian. So if you compare this to an xy plane, a, co a polar plane is very hard to set up. So every time I use a polar plane, I will just found I will just uh, download one online. So this we call this a polar plane. I drew one for you, but when I but when I do graph on polar planes, I always take one online. So this is what a polar plane looks like. So we are not, we don't have X and Y anymore. We have a, a horizontal axis, a vertical axis, and then we have a bunch of circle. And then in each mark, so we have a degree. The degree is in 
uh, radian and degree. So let me show you how to plot one of this. So let's say I want to plot a point where r is equals to 4 and then theta is equals to pi over 4. How do we do that? So first you have to scale the r. So the origin is 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and then r is equals to 4. This is r equals to 4 right at that point and then you have to rotate pi over 4 which is 45 degree uh, counterclockwise. So we go 45 degree uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, so that means we are right here. So this is where the point is. And then we have to draw a line from the origin to this point. And then after that, uh, you to indicate pi over 4 uh, uh, counterclockwise, you can do this, you can draw an arrow. So let's do more. The next one that I would like to do is uh, r equals to 7 and then theta equals to 90 degree or pi over 2, so 90 degree, 7. So first of all, here is 7, right? And then you rotate 90 degree counterclockwise. So you rotate, so you go in this direction. And then that is the place where you have to stop. Of course, uh, you this line, you do this in your mind. You don't write it down. So let's uh, get rid of that. So we have a point right here. And then r is equals to 7. So this that means r is equals to 7. Actually, you don't even need to draw this line. All you have to do is you provide this point. So let's do one more. So we have a point. Uh, let's say r is equals to 6. And then the degree is equals to uh, 150 degree. So 150 degree is right here. So you go from 6 and then you rotate. So this is scratch work. So 6 and then you rotate counterclockwise. And then you stop at 150 degree. And then uh, that is where you have to start. So now it is okay to get rid of this line and then you just put a point right here. So if you count, so you can go like that. So this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, let's do one more. So uh, this time I want to do uh, r is equals to 3, the directed distance, and then the angle, what angle do you like? How about 255 degree? 255 degree is right here. So you start at 3 and then you stop at 225. So start at 3 and then you rotate and then you stop at 255 degree. So you stop right there. So now it is good to erase that and then just put a point right there. All right, so let's do the last one. So the last one is uh, 5 and then 360 degrees. So 360 degrees is one full circle. So that means you have to go this way. So let me use another color for this one. So 5 and then 360 degrees. So you just trace one full circle and then you stop at the starting point. So now let's get rid of that. So this is your Phi comma 360. So that is the basic introduction to polar coordinates and polar plane. So that will be all in this uh, part. In the next part, I will introduce how to put points on a on a polar plane when what if the R is positive or negative? What about the theta? What about the angle? What if we have a positive angle and negative angle? Alright, so I will explain that in the next part. I see you in there signing up for now.